So we're going to go on to section 7.2. For the rest of our time, we'll talk about how to multiply and divide rational expressions. That just means fractions of polynomials, just like we've been dealing with. Multiplying and dividing rational expressions. Multiplying, dividing, rational expressions. Very, very, very much like working with fractions. With fractions, you really have two options, right? Here's your two options for multiplying. If I just give you some regular old fractions, we can do something like that. And you have two options, really. You could go and multiply the, the numerators, couldn't you? Do like 7 times 15, 5 times 11, because we know when we multiply fractions, we just go straight across. Do you recall that from mm -hmm. a long time ago? I hope so. I hope you, you do, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, that's good. We just go straight across, and we get something like 100, what is that, 105 over 55. And then you'd have to simplify it, wouldn't you, if you did it this way? But there's really another option, and this is probably what you prefer to do when you multiply fractions. So the or what we're going to do, when you get down to this part of it, you still have to write it as 7 times 15 over 5 times 11. But what we can do here is instead of actually going through with the, this process, I want you to realize what we've just done. Look at the problem real quick. Do you see that in going from this step to this step, we've actually changed it from a multiplication problem to a simplification problem that we've just done. Do you see that? Do you see common factors now? Mm -hmm. We can simplify common factors. So the 5 becomes a 1, 15 becomes a 3. This is what you're used to, right? I hope. Mm -hmm. And you do the 21 over 11, which is a lot easier than, than doing that. Mm -hmm. But notice that the process here is when you write two fractions being multiplied together, as one fraction, you change it from a multiplication problem to a simplification problem, and then we're back to the 7.1 stuff that we just finished doing. That's it. That's really it. We'll try a few kind of basic, basic problems here, just to get our feet wet, wet with the stuff, and then we'll deal with some, some honest to goodness, uh, rational expressions and, and see how to accomplish those. So, just to kind of confirm what we're doing, can we do something like, Okay, first thing. Notice we do have multiplication, they're fractions, they're rational expressions. We each have, we only have one term on each numerator and denominator though. That's fine. We can still go about and multiply these together and simplify them. So here's what we're going to do. Here's a step I do need to see from you. Are you listening back there? Step I do need to see from you. I need to see somehow that you're making this into one fraction before you start simplifying them. This is for a couple reasons. First, I need to see that you, you know we multiply straight across and we get one fraction on the top and the bottom, numerator and denominator, before we simplify. Second, I can't allow you to do this across like addition or subtraction because it just flat out doesn't work. And so if, if you can make this into one fraction, write this as one fraction, then I know you understand that I'm not going to be able to do this on addition subtraction. We can't simplify across addition subtraction. Are you with me on this? So there's two ways you can do this. You can rewrite the problem like I'll be doing, or if you, if you want, if you just don't feel like rewriting it, if you ever have multiplication, we can just extend that line and put the dot in the dot. That makes this into one fraction. Just do this little piece before you actually simplify. You okay with that? Just do that for me. Make sure you have one fraction before you simplify, because if you can't do that, and with addition or subtraction, you got a problem. You can't simplify like we're about to. So I'll go back to what we were. You can just do the line, put the dot in the dot, if you'd like on your paper. Me, I'm going to rewrite it. Negative 5x cubed. We know with multiplication we multiply straight across. So this becomes negative 5x cubed 
times 2b squared. We're actually not going to multiply them together. We're not going to get negative 10 x cubed b squared. That's too much work. We want to simplify before we do that. So let's look at this problem. What I'd like to, to know from you is, do I have any common factors on the numerator and the denominator? Yes. Firstly, are you okay getting to this point? Yeah. Multiplying fractions is straight across. We're just we're, we're right here right now. We haven't multiplied the numbers yet. We're right here right now. We're going to simplify now. What was the numbers you said? Five. Okay. So we're going to simplify like you would up here. The five, negative five becomes a what now? One. Yeah, don't forget about the negative, negative one. And this 15 becomes? Five. And we're dividing by five, remember. What else gets simplified? The x. Yes. Oh, x is great. This x is completely gone. This x becomes what? X squared. I'll write that up top so I don't forget about it. Anything else? The b, b squared. Oh, b's, okay. So the b squared and the b cubed, what, what happens here? Gone, okay, great. And this becomes a what? B. So I'll rewrite that. We just have to be careful not to lose anything in translation here. So we notice we have a negative. We've got an x squared, and we have a 2. Don't forget about that 2. You didn't cross it out. It's still there, all right? Can you tell me how much I'm going to have on the numerator? Negative 2. That's great. Perfect. That's exactly right. Negative 2, negative 2, x squared. It's all being multiplied. And on the denominator, how much do you get? How did you get the 9? Because 3 times 3, you still have the So we don't forget about that 3. We didn't cross that out. It's still there. 3 times 3, and then the b. You're exactly right. Would you raise your hand if you're okay with this one? Feel alright with it. Would you like to try one on your own? Sure. Let's try. We'll try two. One you might not be able to simplify. It. I just want to make sure that you can do this. The second one you'll be able to simplify. Let's do this one on your own. Remember what I'd like to see from you is before you try to simplify or even multiply these things together, I want to see you write this as one fraction. So if you want to just extend that line, that's, that's okay. That's fine with me. As long as we know that we can't simplify until we get this to be one fraction. That saves a lot of headaches later. Is there a little bit more time? Give it 20 more seconds or so to see if we can wrap that up. Good, lots of good work so far. Okay, here's what I'm talking about, about showing me this, the work. If you really want to do this, if you don't want to rewrite it, um, write this as one fraction because we can do that with multiplication. Put the dot and the dot, it's signifying that multiplication of two fractions is multiplication of numerators and denominators. That's fine with me, okay? You can do that. Then check for anything you can simplify. Is there anything to simplify in this problem? No. No, there's really not. So we're going to keep on going and say this is 12a. 
This is 5b squared, and that's it. Sometimes you can't simplify anything. If there's no common factors, you're, you're good. That's it. The next one, same idea. We'll extend our fraction. Did you do that? Mm -hmm. yes. Put the dot and the dot. I want to see that because this shows me I understand it has to be one fraction before I start crossing stuff out. Anything simplified here? The y squared. Y, okay, y squared's gone. Y cubed becomes a? Y. Perfect. Anything else? The three and the x. Three is four. gone. That becomes a one, actually. Uh -huh. And the n negative nine becomes? Three. three. Good. Don't forget about the negative. And x. Ah, right. We have x to the fourth, and we have an x to the fifth. x to the fourth is completely gone, becomes a one. x to the fifth, we have one remaining x after we simplify that out. How many will made it that far? Good. We write what's left over, write it nice and neat like. We've got 1 times 2 times y, so that's going to give us 2y. We've got negative 3 times x, that's just negative 3x. I believe that's our final answer. As good as we can do it. Now, there is one more that we can cover today that we're going to talk about. What happens when I start doing things like this? A rational expression times a rational expression. Well, guess what? This is going to be so similar simplification, it's not even funny. It's going to be almost the same thing. There's only one little extra step that we need to do. So here's our, our steps for this. First step we're going to do, pretty much this happens almost, almost every time you get rational expressions. What's the first thing you think we're going to do? What shoes are you wearing today? Factoring. Factoring shoes. What are we going to do? Factoring. You're going to factor. Yeah, you're going to factor this. Just like you do with simplification, you're going to factor completely. Factor completely. Let's see if we can do that. Let's kind of do this quickly. We have a minute and ten seconds to see if we can get this thing done. Does this factor? Yep. Yeah. What factors out of that? Six. Perfect. Does the 7 factor? No. Does the 14 factor? No. Hey, are you starting to recognize what the x squared minus 1 is? Mm -hmm. What is that? X, x plus 1, one x minus 1. Good. Difference squares, someone said over here, x minus 1, x plus 1. Are you starting to see the x minus 1, x plus 1 pop up like that? Mm -hmm. Good. We factored this, back down to 6. 7 and 14, we're good. x squared minus 1, we've got to factor that difference of squares. Remember, this is x squared minus 1 squared. We can do x minus 1, x plus 1. We already did this today, actually, in this class. The next step is exactly what we did right here and right here. We're going to write this as one fraction. That's the easy. That's easy. For us, that just means this right here, folks. We're going to take this. We're going to extend the line. That makes it one fraction. Put the dot dot. And guess what? Look at the board. Does this not look exactly like what we had in simplification? Because yeah. it is exactly what we had in simplification. Third step is simplify. If we simplify, can you tell me some things that simplify here? gone. Seven, 14. 7 becomes a 1, 14 is a 2, so on our numerator we have 6 times 2, and we have x minus 1. That's it. It's completely simplified. How many will feel okay with this problem? Good for you. That's our steps. We're going to be doing this a lot. Next time I'll show you division as well. Um, I believe I gave you your homework for 7.1, didn't I? It's up on the internet. It's on the, okay. Have you made it to the internet yet to find that? All right, so we're continuing learning how to multiply, and then we'll get to dividing some rational expressions. Today we'll continue with a couple more multiplying. The last one I gave you was uh, the one with some steps on that, right? I gave you the steps as well. And the first thing that we're supposed to do when we're multiplying some rational expressions is we need to factor these things completely out. And the reason why is because we're going to be simplifying using common factors. So we can't do that unless we actually factor it. So let's go ahead and try this on this next example.
And we'll see what to do about this. Now I gave you a few steps. Last time we're going to follow those pretty much to the letter every time we do a multiplication of rational expressions. That's the best way to do it. So the very first thing we get to do is we look at this thing and we are going to, what was that again? Yeah, we've got to factor completely because, again, we're going to be looking for common factors eventually. So let's look at this thing together. Can you tell me something up here that you're going to be able to factor? 5x five, five and 15. Okay, factor out first before we start simplifying. Oh. <laughs> factor out. So, so x squared minus 1. Okay. So x squared minus 1, we can factor that thing. What's that called, people on the left-hand side of the room? This particular type of expression is? Term. Different of the square. We have square something. We have. Difference of square? That's a difference of square. Are you guys awake today? <laughs> <laughs> Are you sure? Yeah. Uh, that's a All right, let's wake it up. Come on. Yeah, that's a difference of squares. You need to be seeing that. It's a difference because it has a subtraction. That's two squares there. We've actually factored that one at least twice in this class already. Uh, we need to be very good at seeing those. So we're going to. How about the 15? Can I factor the 15? How about the 5x? Can I factor the 5x? No. no. Those, are, those are there. Those are just single terms. You can't factor single terms. x squared minus 1, though, that is something we can factor. Someone in the middle of the classroom, tell me how I factor x squared minus 1, please. x minus 1, x plus 1. Very good. That's the difference of squares. got to be... Bam! Just getting those right all the time. Are you okay, okay on getting x minus 1, x plus 1? Mm -hmm. See where that's coming from? Good, all right. We've covered that a few times in here now. Uh, now, how about anything else up here? What else factors? X Great, x squared minus x. What factors out of that? So remember, even though it looks like two terms, like that's not a difference of squares. How am I supposed to factor that? We always start factoring with GCF, that greatest common factor. And when you look at x squared minus x, well, they, they share an x in common, so we're going to factor that out. So we'll factor out an x. What are we left with if we factor out the x? x minus 1. Okay. You all look kind of factoring things like that. Good. So no diamond problems here. That's really not a big deal. Uh, the next thing we do is, after we factor, what am I making you do before we do anything else? Say that louder. Right as one yeah, we have to. Because what we're doing here is we're changing, after we factor, we're changing a multiplication problem into a simplification problem. And the only thing that we have to do to show that is I let you, instead of rewrite the whole thing, just extend that line. That's all you got to do. Because as soon as we extend this line, put the multiplication there and there, we now have a simplification instead of a multiplication problem. That's kind of nice. So, now we're on to simplifying some. This is the best part. We get to cross stuff out. What can we cross out on this problem? The 5. <laughs> yeah, now we're ready to cross out the yeah, 5. Yeah. That's right. We couldn't do it before because yeah. notice they're not together yet. We want to factor mm -hmm. first, make sure we have this one fraction, then we can do it. The 5 with the what? 15. 15 becomes a what, everybody? 3. Good. Okay, somebody else give me another thing I can cross out. Mm -hmm. Say that louder? Mm -hmm. The x. Let's look at the x. Can I cross out the x? Uh, yeah. They're being multiplied, right? That means it's a factor. So this x and this x are gone. That's great. Right hand side of the room, something else I can simplify. Perfect. Those are entire factors. We can simplify those out. We're going to write what's remaining. We've got to be careful not to write anything we've crossed out, but we can't miss anything either. So on our numerator, what's left? Well, that's great. How about the denominator? So all this stuff, when you all simplify it, it's just equal to 3 over x plus 1. That's it. That's as far as we can go. You can't simplify anymore because you wouldn't have been able to do it in the previous step right there. How many people feel okay about this particular problem? Good. All right. Let's continue on this stuff. We'll do one more together. Then we'll start talking about some division. And you're going to find that division is very, very similar to multiplication. There's just one little extra step. I am going to have you do some of this stuff on your own on this problem.
Okay, we are going to do this somewhat together, somewhat on your own. This is a great problem for us to do. This actually covers pretty much every type of factoring we've done in here so far. So if you can do this problem, you should feel pretty good about your factoring, all right? So let's go ahead, and I'm going to do this piece by piece with you. We'll start with the easy parts of this. So right now on your paper, the first thing we, we know we need to do is factor. You guys are all with me on that, right? Mm -hmm. We can't really do anything with this unless we factor it. We can't start simplifying 3 and 9. That, that doesn't work. You've got to factor first because you have to get this as one fraction and then start simplifying. So what I'd like you to do, start with your problem, factor this one first. Okay, I'll give you about, that's, this is an easy one, let's factor this one, about five seconds to factor that. Okay, so the 4x plus 8, I'm giving you some time. What factors out of 4x plus 8? Good. And you're left with? Now, your head if you factored that out and got x plus 2. Did you? Good, okay. Now, let's go, let's go down to, let's see, which one do you want to do next? 14x. This one? Okay, let's factor that one. Now, there was one thing I told you about that one. Let's see if you can see, if you can see it. I told you about this, I think, last, last time or something before that. Factor on your own, see what you can factor out. Okay, so 14x minus 7x squared, you have a couple options here, all right? You have options. Now, one of them is going to be a better option for you. I told you this a while back. I said you're supposed to factor in order to get the term with the largest exponent positive because otherwise you're going to have to factor out a negative anyway. Are you with me on this? So in this problem, really you shouldn't be looking at factoring out 7x. You should be factoring out negative 7x. How many people saw the negative 7x there? Good for you. If you didn't, now fix, your, fix the, the problem. So we're going to factor out negative 7 and the x. If you do that, factor out negative 7x, what you're going to be left with is negative 2 plus x. Do you see how by factoring out the negative we changed both signs? Mm -hmm. are, are you clear on that or no? Are you sure? Okay. I just want to make sure that you know why that's a negative and why that's now a plus. Do you see it? So we're factoring the negative out. Okay, if you distributed it, we'd get exactly that thing back again. Now the next step I'm going to do on this little part is I'm just going to take these and flip them around. It's going to be x minus 2. Now you're going to be okay on that part. Okay, that's going to make things a lot easier to see in the future in the next thing we're going to do. Okay, let's go down to, oh, let's do this one. Let's do the 3x squared minus 5x minus 2. You all should know how to factor that one real well at this point. This is what type of problem? Good. And ladies and gentlemen, on the left-hand side of the room, is this going to be the extra step where we have to factor by grouping or not? Okay, do that now. I'll give you about a minute. You should be pretty good at this stuff right now. Also, guys, try to go through that homework kind of quickly because I have a lot to, I have four times to get back to you. If we don't do it now, it's going to get backed up. What number goes up top? Okay. What number goes on the bottom? Six. So to add negative five, you're supposed to multiply to negative six. Yeah, a lot of people try twos and threes here. Twos and threes aren't going to work. Uh, you, you're going to have to multiply to negative six. That means you're going to have one positive, one negative, and they're going to have to add a negative five. Threes and twos won't cut it for you. So you're going to have to have a six and a one somehow. Um, in our case, we're going to have a negative 6 
and a positive 1. Negative 6 and positive 1 is only two numbers you're going to do. Did you find negative 6 positive 1? Good, all right. Now, we can't just put x minus 6 and x plus 1. We could do that if there's no number out front like that. That'd be great. But there is a number out front. That means our extra step says we're going to do... Factor by grouping. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the factor by grouping. In order to do that, we make four terms out of it. We look at the first two. What factors out of the first two is a 3x. So we factor 3x. We get x minus 2. We look at the second part. There's really nothing that factors out of those two terms. So we factor out a 1. So we're going to do plus because it says plus. We still have the x minus 2 because factoring out 1 doesn't change anything. Have we done the problem right? Yeah, it looks right because we have the same thing in both spots. So we continue on. And that's our new numerator. How many people are with it so far? Feel like this? Good. Hey, there's one more part. Let's look at 9x squared minus 1. Factor it. If we factor 9x squared minus 1, we look into this and we see we have how many terms here? How many terms here? Two terms. That means we look for greater than one factor. Of course, there's not one because we have a 1 up there. But this isn't a diamond problem. This can only be really one thing for us. This could be a difference of squares. Because we have a square, we don't have a cube. Or <coughs> nothing. In this case, this is a difference of squares. Did you see the difference of squares? Mm -hmm. Now, how in the world is it a difference of squares? Well, we can write 9x squared as 3x squared. Do you buy that? That's 9x squared. And then minus, instead of 1, you really could, you could write 1 squared. And so what this is, is exactly the same. Look at this. This is the same as this, basically. It's just instead of x squared, you have 3x squared. Are you with me on that? Difference of squares. We've had that several times now. You're going you're gonna to be pretty good at this at the end of the semester. So we get to factor this as 3x minus 1, 3x plus 1, just like we did this. Ladies and gentlemen, are we okay on the problem or no? Measure if you're okay. You can follow it down. You might have to go back and try this problem on your own. Uh, trust me, you don't want to just sit here and follow it one time because, of course, I know how to do this stuff, right? It's going to make sense when I'm doing it. Uh, but it might not make sense when you're doing it. So go home and try this one again. Make sure you can get this again, okay? If you're not doing it, uh, I had a snafu with the lectures. I couldn't get them on this weekend. Um, the hard drive just it doesn't matter. I was not so happy last night. But uh, these will be on probably tomorrow afternoon, the, the lectures. Yeah. Uh, can you write the negative 7x um, times the negative 2 plus x as uh, X minus two. That's, ex that's exactly the next step I'm going to do. Yeah, that's, that's a great point. So are you okay getting down to this far so far? Okay. So the next thing we are going to do is, is exactly what you said. Hard for you, right? Okay. Well, hard for you said is, can't we write this a little bit different? And yeah, we're going to. Instead of negative 2 plus X, I'm going to keep these the signs with the terms and just do X minus 2. So I'm going to give you the next step I'm going to do. Before that, before I, before I start simplifying some things, I'm going to do one more thing. Yeah, I need to see one fraction out of this, so I'm going to extend this, put the dot dot. That's the only thing. I just want one fraction right there. That's it. And then we can start simplifying, shout out some things that we can simplify up here. X minus 2. Okay, someone else give me something else we can simplify up here. 3x plus 1. Great. Wait, let's wait a second. Even though they're on the same fraction, I can still simplify those? Sure, why not? Yeah, you're just looking for common factors. It doesn't really matter. 
and it doesn't have to be across from each other. Is there anything else we can simplify up here? I got a, how about the four? Seven? This x? These x's don't count? X plus two, no, there's none of those. Three X minus one, so there's nothing left, nothing like that. So we're just gonna write what's left over. We've got a four and an X plus two. We've got a negative seven X. Three X minus one, don't distribute it, you just leave it, just like that. Now again, the reason why we factored out the negative seven up here is so these two expressions would simplify out. Otherwise, you'd have to factor a negative at this point. Are you with me on that? You'd have to do it somewhere. You may as well do it again. It's easier that way. Do you feel okay about multiplication today? Raise your hand if you're okay about multiplication today. Good. So we learned that multiplication is basically simplification. It just happens in two different fractions. So we're simplifying two different problems at once, basically. We get to put them together as one fraction, and then we go. Let's see what happens now with some division. Before. We're going to start off kind of nice and easy with some basic, basic fractions here. And the question is, I know you know this because you're in this class, uh, but how in the world do you divide fractions? Is there a way to actually directly divide fractions, or do we have to manipulate this somehow? Yeah, you really can't just directly divide them, right? It's really hard to think about that. Um, if you really think about, what's three-fourths divided into seven-eighths parts? I don't even know. That's kind of weird to even contemplate that. But we have a method of doing this thing. What's the method of actually dividing our, our fractions here? Flip one and multiply. Do what now? Flip that Flip one. Okay, yeah, that's great. We flip one. What's the flip one? What's that called? <laughs> So we're going to find the reciprocal, we're going to reciprocate it, right? Reciprocate that fraction. Now, do we reciprocate the first one, the second one, or both of them? Which, which is the first one we leave alone, second one, we reciprocate that one. So we, we reciprocate the second fraction, and after we reciprocate the second fraction, we do what to it? Yeah, multiply it, and then we'll rise one fraction. So we're learning that division literally has one more step than multiplication. That's really it, and it's not even a hard step. You just have to remember to reciprocate the second fraction, then you're back to multiplication, which we just finished covering, which essentially is just simplification, which is basically just factoring. So if you know how to flip a fraction and factor, you know, that's it. So we're going to reciprocate second fraction, And multiply. So in our case up here, what we do, like you've seen many times before, we leave the three fourths. Instead of seven eighths, we make that eight sevenths. That's the reciprocal. And then that changes division into our multiplication. That's great. Because as soon as we do our multiplication, we know we can extend the line. We can put the dot dot. We can simplify it. Simplify like we've been doing for a long time. We get six <coughs> sevenths. If I've done that right, I think I have, and we're, we're good to go. Are you okay with the, the division of simple fractions like that? Good. Let's try to extend this concept to our rational expressions. So 7x squared divided by 6 divided by x over 2y. And our first step again is, what's our first step? Reciprocal. Reciprocal, okay. So we're going to find the reciprocal of, again, we're talking about which fraction here? 
Let's do that. So the reciprocal just means we're going to leave the 7x squared alone over 6. Instead of dividing, we'll be multiplying, and we're going to flip over or reciprocate the second fraction. And this is something we just finished doing. That's great. We know how to do that. What's the first step in doing this one? What was that again? Good, okay. We want one fraction out of it before we start simplifying. So we're just going to continue that concept. We make one fraction. And as someone who hasn't spoken yet today, what's the first thing I can simplify here? Say that again? 7x squared. 7x squared. Okay, what part of that? X squared. Okay. X squared becomes what? And what else happens? Good, okay. Anything else that you see? 6 and 2. 2 becomes? 6 becomes? Perfect. Anything else that you see? No, I think we're done there. We're going to write the numerator as the multiplication of those remaining factors. Denominator, same thing. So we have a 7, we have an x, we have a y. All over 3. That's it, as far as we can go. Well, let's try one on your own before we make this any more complicated. Just to make sure you have this down, and then we'll keep going, okay? Is that homework still going around? Have you guys gotten the first assignment yet? No. Okay, yeah. hurry. What's the first thing you did? Okay. Do you know, by the way, why I have you wait until you have one line before you simplify? Here's a good reason why. Because if I don't have you do that, a lot of times people look at this fraction and they go, oh, you know what I see? I see the 10 and the 24. I can simplify that. Do you see how if I don't have you write one line, then some people are going to do that. See what I'm talking about? You know, oh, 10 and 24 goes in, 2 goes into both. We get 5 and we get 6, or we get 12. Yay! Oh, we can't do that here. We have to wait until we can write it as one fraction. That only happens on multiplication. That's why I have you do that step. So here we go, all right. First thing we're going to do is reciprocate the second fraction. Of course, we're going to be multiplying. But now we're going to be multiplying by 6 over 10, 8 to the fifth. Nod your head if you did that step correctly. Sweet, good deal. Next thing we do is what? Before we simplify, yeah, before we do that, I want to see that. This, is, this allows you to simplify things. It says, oh, I have one, one fraction. One fraction is how we simplify. Common factors both top and bottom. We do that part. And now we get to go, OK, the things I see here are 6 to 24. 1, 4. Did you get that one? We get the 5 and the 10. 1, 2. I get the a to the fifth and the a cubed. a cubed is gone. a to the fifth becomes? a squared, and what I'm hoping is that you've got a b squared over 8a squared. Did you get that as well? Yeah. Now we're done, as far as you can go on that problem, okay? Now let's see what happens, see if we even do anything different when we start getting actual honest-to-goodness rational expressions.
So this has some pretty serious factoring in it. We're gonna we're gonna have to do that. But here's what I'd like from y'all, right? Y'all know that we're gonna factor here, right? Right? Yeah. You're gonna factor eventually. Yeah, that's what this whole thing's about. Just make sure that you flip it first before you factor it, because what I would hate for you to do is factor and then notice some common factors that maybe are coincidental and simplify those before you flip it. That would be the wrong thing. So make sure that we're flipping this first, and then you can start factoring. Are you with me on this? Just do that first. What we have, we have that down. So I'll say, flip first, then factor. So the first thing we're going to do, we leave the first fraction alone. We all know that by this point. We're going to change our division to multiplication by reciprocating the second fraction. <laughs> and then we get to factor it. Why don't you give yourself a few seconds to try to factor that thing, okay? Our top numerator here. What's this one? Two. Two goes out of that. Okay. Two goes out of that. We get what? Five x plus two. Good. Did y'all get five x plus two? Okay. How about this numerator? What factors out of these two? Okay. Great. Sometimes that happens. How about this one? Does anything factor out of those two? Good. And I'm left with. Okay. We already might be seeing some things here, right? That's great. Now, last one we have is x squared minus 4. Some on the right-hand side of the room, what is that known as, x squared minus 4? Difference of squares. Say it louder. Difference of squares. Good. Different squares. And some over here has difference of squares factor in this particular case. Good. 2, right? Not 4. 2. Good. Are you starting to see the difference of squares a little bit easier? I'm throwing them at you now, just making sure you, you get this down. We've had like three or four today. Uh, so we really need to get those so we're not really stuck on them, that's why. Okay, great, we have this thing completely factored. The next step is to do what? Good, okay, let's try that. So one big fraction out of this, that's what I want to see. There's one thing here I need you to notice. If you make this one big fraction here, notice you're multiplying, right? And this this top thing, it didn't have any parentheses, we couldn't factor it, we didn't create any parentheses, but if you're going to multiply this, you do need to throw some parentheses around that. Do you see why? Multiplying that entire thing. Uh, this fraction implies parentheses here and here already, so we need to show that on, on the next step when we extend that fraction. So make sure you have those parentheses, that's going to allow you to simplify some things a little bit easier because you're going to see it. Now that we see it, what are you, what are you guys seeing here? Okay. Somebody else give me another one besides 5x plus 2. 2, okay. Someone else give me another one if we have any. Do we have anything else? Okay, let's write what's remaining. Only thing we have on the numerator is what? 2. On the denominator, I see the x minus 2. We didn't cross that out. I see the x squared. Be careful not to lose that thing. We typically will do it this way, though. We'll write the x squared before the parentheses. Don't distribute it, you're done. That's as far as you can go. Do you feel okay about this example? Right. I'm going to have you do one on your own before we do another one together. And then we'll practice one more, if, and then we should have some time. And then we'll be done with our section. We'll go on to adding and subtracting. So try this one completely on your own.
It is similar to the last one, which is good. So do this one on your own. If you get done with that, that's a 10, by the way. If you get done with that one, you feel like a superstar today, you feel like a rock star, you know, go ahead and try that one. By the way, is there any other homework to turn in? Are you at the beginning of class? Look at the first one over here. Hey, before you factor, what should you do with this problem? Yeah, that's right. Because we want to make sure we have that down. We don't want to forget about that. So we're going to flip the first, the second, or both, everybody. I said the second. Good. Okay, so we've gone ahead, we've reciprocated the second fraction. Now we get to factor because now we don't even have a division problem anymore. It's just multiplication. We just conquered that stuff. We're going to factor this. We're going to write it as one fraction. Then we'll simplify it. If you factor this correctly, what factors out of here is a 2. So you're going to get 5x minus 1. This other numerator, it doesn't factor. We're just going to leave that as x plus 3. This denominator, that's something special. We've seen this a few times now, even today. This is a difference of squares. That factors, it has to be two parentheses. It factors as, you put x and x there. You put what multiplies to get 9 here and here. You put a minus, you put a plus, you get x minus 3, x plus 3. Did you get that on your paper? Good, OK. The next thing we factor out is just an x. And we're going to get 5x minus 1. Before we go any further, before you start simplifying anything, crossing stuff out, even though I know we want to do it right here, just extend this line, put the dot and the dot. We need some parentheses around that thing, and now we're going to start simplifying. What I see up here is an x plus 3 and an x plus 3. I also see a 5x minus 1 and a 5x minus 1. I just don't want to forget the things that I haven't crossed out, such as the 2, that x particularly. A lot of people forget that x. We don't want to do that. 
the x we're going to write first, and then we'll have x minus 3. Would you raise your hand if you made it down that far? You got that? That's good. Good for you. Now, the next thing we're going to do, this one, very similar idea. It just has a little bit more complicated factoring in it. But if you know how to factor these things, it's not a problem. So we're going to leave the first fraction alone. We are going to reciprocate the second. Tell me something up here that you need to factor. Would you tell me that? Yeah, we are going to factor that. How do you factor that problem? Okay, does this have the extra step or not, do you think? Absolutely. So we're going to factor that. <coughs> probably the hardest thing that we, to factor in this problem. We've got negative 10, we've got 24. The only things I'm thinking that make negative 10 and 24 are like 12 and 2. Or, am I wrong? Oh, okay. It could do 12 and 2, right? But it's not going to work out to add to that. You can't do it. So you're going to have to have two negatives here that multiply the positive 24 and add a negative 10. So don't trick yourself up on doing stuff like 12 and 2. Even though those are the first numbers that popped in my head, you really do have to check. So negative 6, negative 4, we're going to write 3x squared minus 6x minus 4x plus 8. So we're getting that from over there, just like we've done several times before. Factoring by grouping says we're going to factor out 3x. We're going to factor out a negative 4, which is going to change the signs inside of our parentheses on the second part of this thing. We have done it right. We'll continue to factor that. And that right there is our new numerator. I know 21 doesn't factor, but the other two should factor. What factors out of my 7x minus 14? So we're going to get x minus 2. The other thing we're going to factor out is a 3. We'll get 3x minus 4. And now we can start the good part of simplifying some common factors. By the way, how many people were able to make it down that far? I know we give some time on that. Oh, that's fantastic. Very good. We'll extend our line, put the dot dot. Can you tell me something up here that simplifies? Good. Completely gone. Anything else that simplifies? 7 and 21. 7 and 21, okay. 7 becomes a 1, 21 becomes a 3. What else? 3, 3, 3. Yeah, the 3s. They actually, you keep going on that, right? So we got a common factor of 3 still. 3 and 3. Anything else? X minus 2. Wait a second. We just crossed out everything. We got 1. Yeah. We don't have 0. Okay, we don't have 0. What you have here are, you made lots of factors of 1, right? So basically you have 1 times 1 times 1. That's just going to make one for us. You have ones on the top, you have ones on the denominator, we're going to get one. Okay, I want you to do all, one all the way down by yourself, and then we'll call it a day today. Well, maybe not. You might have some time. Oh, but there are some homework problems I do want to go over with you, so we'll do that. There you go, this, this is all you. You guys got to do this one.
So I hope you, you reciprocated the second fraction. That's the first thing that you do. <coughs> Next thing you do is a whole bunch of factoring. One thing real quick, I want to make sure you see you saw this. Look at the board here for a second. I'll pause you. On this right here, even though it looks like, well, there's no common factors, what I need you to do with this thing is make the x term positive. You remember doing that? So make that positive. That means you're going to factor out a negative 1 here, and you're going to get instead of 3 minus x, negative 1 times negative 3 plus x. And we're going to rewrite that in just a second. But this is going to allow us to simplify something in the future. Good, I see lots of good factoring today. Next what I'm going to do is this one over here. We have 2x minus 10. Hopefully you factored out 2 from that and you got x plus 5. You got that one. Okay. Hey, these last two, they're clearly diamond problems. We got three terms. Am I going to have to use the factor by grouping that extra step, or can I go directly to the factors? Great, okay, so these are easier ones, right? These are the, the ones that you don't want to waste your time on. I don't know if you're going to be able to see this that well, but I'm going to do a mini diamond problem. Six and five right there. I'm going to do negative seven and 12 right there. With the six and the five, that's going to be five and one. Did you get five and one? With the negative seven and twelve, that tells me I have two negative numbers here. That's going to be negative four and negative three. Did you get negative four and negative three? Yeah. Good. Okay. So here we have our x minus four, x minus three. No factor by grouping. That's great. Here we've got our x plus five, x plus one. Again, no factor by grouping. But you originally haven't made it down that far. That's very good. Okay, so we extend our line here. We put our dot and our dot. Now we can start simplifying some things. There's one thing I'm going to do before I do this, and you'll, you'll probably know what I'm talking about here. I'm just going to reorder these things, because right now it doesn't, doesn't look exactly the same to me. So I'm going to erase this. I'm going to put my x minus 3, and now I can simplify. We've got our x minus 3s gone. We've got our x plus 5s gone. Is there anything else that we can do? No, in fact, there's not much left on the numerator, actually. What is left on the numerator for us? So that'll give us negative 2. On the denominator, we have two factors left. We just have to write both of them. Don't distribute it. Don't foil it. That's it. That's as far as we can go. Ladies and gentlemen, we're done with division. How many of you feel okay about multiplication and division? Are you starting to see how important factoring is to us? That's basically all we've done for like five sections in a row. Just different applications of factoring. Now, what we're going to do in the last two minutes, I do want to go over these homework problems. These are from your C point, the first C point four, I believe you did. This one is from the solving, I think, C point one. I just want to make sure that you're seeing the greatest common factor. Look up how this is going to change what we do, especially on these two problems, if you factor your greatest common factor first. So in this problem, we're looking at this, I know a 2 factors out of that. What this does for you when you do this, it's going to factor it completely. Because if you don't do this, and you factor this with a diamond problem with an extra step, which is what you have to do, you're going to have one factor that still has something that can be factored. Okay, that's why if I, if I gave you the, if you said, oh, I did that right, and I circled it, and I crossed something out, that means you got it wrong because it's not factored completely. All right? You have something in there that can still be factored. By the way, what I do on your homework, I circle one problem, I put a check mark if it's right, I'll cross it out if it's wrong, I'll probably circle the part that you need to work on if I have some time. Okay? 
So that's what, what you have on that thing. This would be the diamond problem, but you have to do this step first. You got it. Otherwise, you're not going to have it completely factored. Not just going to be okay with that one. Okay. The next one, these ones are nice. Man, if you do GCF, you don't have to waste your time. So you factor out a 6, it becomes x squared minus x minus 2. That thing factors very easily. That's x and x minus 2 plus 1. You're done. You don't have to do an extra step. That's just a simple diamond problem off to the side. You with me on that? That saves you a lot of time. This one, this one saves you a ton of time. OMG. I mean, <laughs> crazy tight. If you factor out the 20 here, what is that, 30? This is one of the ones you might have spent a whole long time doing. If you tried to do this with the diamond problem with the extra step, that's crazy. You're getting huge numbers. It's ridiculous. You get like 1,200, 12, you get like 12,000. I mean, come on, really? There's got to be a better way to do that. You factor the 20 out, ignore the 20 for a second. Do you see that this is very easy to factor? You just go 20. That's a diamond problem off to the side, negative 11. And 30, you're going to get negative 6 and negative 5. X minus 6. X minus 5, you're done. That's all you got to do. This one, I just got to make sure you do one thing on this. When you multiply it by the LCD, which in our case is 36, Make sure you first multiply it by the 4. Secondly, make sure you have parentheses around that. A lot of people are forgetting parentheses. Uh, check your math on that problem. It's on C.1 because a lot of people mess that thing up. I, got, I think that's number 30. You got